Context is everything in a title race. And so I'd only encourage you to watch a lot of Liverpool media right now and not other people because I realised today when I was doing the live stream on Sky Sports that actually there are a fair few people who judge Liverpool by Arsenal standards and Arsenal by Man City standards and Man City by some completely different standards and all of them are looking for the wrong things in different managers' games. So why is it that Liverpool haven't gotten a result against Manchester United this season? Eric Ten Hag has managed to cancel out a lot of what Liverpool have been doing, but also Liverpool have never quite been at the races in the way they need to be in order to win against a fairly well set up side. And actually, a side that is also frustratingly fortunate as against seven big chances for Liverpool. Welcome back to the Lawrence McKenna channel. It's good to have you guys. Remember, if you've not already at the Patreon and you want to support some of the content we make, be that as Liverpool fans or as other fans in general, then hit that link up there. At least take a look at it. There's a bit of behind the scenes content. There's a bit of other content over there. Stuff you can only see on the Patreon. So go take a look at it. I'd love for you guys to get involved. And there's also a Discord link, link down in the description. Liverpool, of course, went to Old Trafford needing a result. When I say needing a result, like, you cannot afford to drop points in this title race. Liverpool couldn't afford to drop these points. Arsenal got the result on Saturday. City got the result on Saturday. And you know what? Order of games, the time you play teams, all these kind of things matters. But you can't change that. You can't change the randomness. Well, you can change the randomness of fixtures. We know they're not completely random, but they're random. You can't change the randomness as a team. You can't change the order in which you play the teams. And judging a team like Liverpool, against the standards of beating Manchester United is probably a really good way of working out how good this team is. Are they as imperious as they need to be? Not always. Is there a work of outable tactical formula that Liverpool stick to? Yes, but did Manchester United work it out? I don't really think so. Are Liverpool, due to the chaos or the different style of control that they don't play in a similar way to Arsenal or City, a little more susceptible to this kind of result, yes, which is what makes the title run in a little bit more difficult, but also could make the title run in a little bit more interesting. Liverpool deserved a big result today against Manchester United at Old Trafford. They absolutely, in the first half, negated everything Manchester United put out there, uh, did what they needed to do from set pieces, but didn't finish those big chances. We've now seen Diaz spurn or miss a number of big chances. Nunez spurn or miss a number of big chances. Salah had that chance at the far post, didn't take it. And I knew on the live stream, you could see, my prediction even was that before I said to, to, I knew that there would be big opportunities that Manchester United would get away with, that Liverpool wouldn't put in the back of the net, and that ultimately a team like Manchester United would come back against Liverpool, would put them on the back foot, would worry us a little bit. And you know what? I don't even worry that much about the, the mistakes or whatever else. I worry more about the fact that Liverpool have gotten themselves to this point and they couldn't get a result at Old Trafford. I know people are going to go, well, Manchester United have lost to this team this season and this team. It's not about that. And I looked at these last few results and the last few fixtures that Liverpool have got and I went, well, how can teams cancel Liverpool out? People are like, oh, we should have been extending our goal difference against Sheffield United. Well, Sheffield United matched really well against Liverpool. Manchester United matched really well against Liverpool. They went narrow. They knew how to negate a lot of what Liverpool were doing. They knew that if they could just get something in front of it, then Liverpool's shots, which were decent shots and actually fairly decent XG, would, in the end, just basically fly away somewhere else because that's what Manchester United are very good at. And if they sat deep and very compact, it was going to be difficult to break down. They did the same against City, but City forced their way through. Liverpool almost forced their way through multiple times, but finishing was poor. The finishing was so frustrating, similar to the City game, similar to the Manchester United games. There are so many other games where the frustrating finishing has gotten the better of Liverpool. And it is frustrating, obviously, as a fan to watch. I do agree with what Klopp said, like those same players who missed those opportunities or Joel Kwanzaa who had the unfortunate ball, like roll across a very heavy pitch. That's, that's hard. That's unfortunate. But it's also sadly going to be the way that Liverpool get judged this season by opposition fans and ultimately by the league table. We can remember this team. I will remember so many of these different Klopp teams that did or didn't win the league, that did get close, that gave me so many great memories. You're missing the point of a Klopp side if you just think it's all about the trophies. But I would also remember that this side did have a big opportunity and have basically had it in their, in their control and couldn't continue that level of control. The frustration, of course, is that on the day, Liverpool actually put a really good team out. They actually put a great midfield, a great attacking line, 
And I hate to say it, but I do think some of the injuries got the better of Liverpool today. Had Trent been at right back, I don't know. I don't know how much difference it would have been. I like what Conor Bradley did. But could Jarrell Kwanzaa then have been a bit more protected? Would there have been a different passing option? You know, there's a butterfly effect there. If you've got Alisson in goal, I don't know how different the game is. The coaching is broadly the same. But again, there is a bit more of a like, hey, this is going to be, you've got to get it just perfect, Kobe Mainu. What happens? Is Alisson that little bit bigger? Is his positioning slightly different? You know, maybe maybe he's even further up the field. Who knows? Like, you know, I, I don't want to be that person that speaks about negatives for no reason. I'm just asking the question because I think it's interesting. And then on top of that, I think Liverpool won multiple battles throughout the field. If you look at their formation, so often they looked balanced. In fact, they were on the front foot. Soboslai was further forward than probably needed to be. McAllister the same. Endo allowed them that freedom. The fullbacks had so much run of the field because of what Endo and that back line were doing. And I know that Liverpool had a couple of times where Manchester United tried to break through. But in that first half, they limited them to zero shots. Liverpool had 15 a lot of which were high quality shots. Soboslai should have put a chance away. Salah should have done the same. Diaz did put that away. I love the fact that Liverpool worked on a set piece, which actually worked. Because Van Dijk attracts so much attention. Of course, you can go down the other, down the other route with other players and go, hey, well, Diaz, you're going to be free. And he was. Manchester United just didn't see it coming. The frustration, of course, is then that we do give away and that people are going to be kind of comparing the Kwanzaa moment to the Gerard slip. It's so different. It took an incredible finish from Bruno to take advantage of that. They really just weren't in the game. And I know that they tweaked to put Bruno a little bit higher to, you know, make Liverpool on the back, to put Liverpool on the back at foot a little bit. And, you know, that Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag were very perceptive. Well, Eric Ten Hag was. Manchester United were clearly not game managing. We're clearly losing the ball way too quickly. Liverpool were so in their heads, so on top of them. They needed to make that count. Will we look back at the end of the season and go, what about those moments that we didn't particularly make count? The Diaz opportunity against Man City. Will we care about those VAR decisions? We're now equal on points with Spurs. Uh, sorry, with Arsenal after those Spurs results, other results. Will we? Is it even worth us looking back? Well, yeah, it kind of is, but at the same time, it isn't. Manchester United are a good, not good, what are they? They're a defensive side who Liverpool let off the hook. And in a way, that gives me hope. Klopp says it's better to lose and know why than to win and have no clue why. Manchester United were in this game and they don't know why. Well, they'll know why in the second half, but they won't know why in the first half. Liverpool felt like a loss because they drew, and they know why. Being able to capitalise on that in the second half, of this, this, the final quarter of the season, but in the second half of this run-in, is huge. It's a shame we didn't have Jota. I would have loved to see Jota on the field. I would have loved to see Canate being aggressive. It's just the way that things just stack up. It's the way that things happen against Sheffield. I said it in my last video, and I said he went off the field, but he went down on the field in the last video. And that was instantly frustrating. I was like, oh, I just wanted to see Canate at Old Trafford. I just wanted to see that same energy that he's brought in previous seasons. There is a contempt this Liverpool team have for the Manchester United side. You can see it in the way that they play. You can see it in the way they treat the opposition. They do not like them. They know that there is that rivalry there. Klopp has made them buy into this. Liverpool have made them buy into this. They know this is a team that they should be beating. And that is the frustration. The hard work, the hard yards have been put in at Liverpool. And now that Manchester United are catching up and they've got the infrastructure, next season they will be trying to get ahead of Liverpool. Liverpool, no, you shouldn't be level with us. You shouldn't be breathing down our necks in terms of progress next season. So we need to make this moment count. But Eric Ten Hag is a great leveller. There are some great levelling coaches in this league. And hopefully Manchester United can do a similar thing to Arsenal. I don't think they will because I think Arsenal's controlling style, similar to City, will ultimately win out. And I think Manchester United and Arsenal feel very differently about each other. There's clearly a personal thing between Liverpool and this Manchester United side after all the results we've had in previous years. But we've only beaten them once since, what, 2019 or since Eric Ten Hag came in? And that is frustrating as a Liverpool fan. Like, of course I want to see Liverpool kill Manchester United when Liverpool are a dominant team, when they're potentially going top of the league. It was a statement that they could have made at Old Trafford, but they didn't make it. And people will try to reframe that. They'll try to say that in this title race, Liverpool have bottled it. They'll try to say all sorts of crazy things, because guess what? Those same people who are saying those things built Liverpool up from a perspective of only doing that to knock Liverpool down. That's disingenuous. There's no point in me doing that. I run a Liverpool channel. I'm obviously a Liverpool supporter. So I want to see the positives. I think there are a lot of things to learn from this. 
We still know, of course, that Liverpool have a lot of games. There are still draws and losses to be had in there for all three of the teams running in. Difficult to see where those come for City. Maybe you could map some out, but even then, it's, it's a fruitless exercise. You don't know what state they're going to be in going into those. You don't know if Arsenal are going to play City twice in the Champions League, exhaust each other, injure each other. It's going to get personal. What is it, you know? Point being, right? <clears throat> there are still many twists and turns. But actually, if you look at it, there are still some consistencies. When Klopp makes his subs, like he made those subs, if we've made them the other way around and we put on Harvey Elliott and whoever else we brought on after the Kobe Mainu goal and we hadn't have changed our right side, does that change? Do we make all four subs at once? Our subs had worked this season because we've confused others by reshifting things and moving people around. But at the same time, the frustration comes in the fact that Manchester United expected that. They foresaw that and they knew that they could cope with it by going extremely deep, extremely compact, breaking on us and then exploding as soon as we make those subs. It was clearly a game plan. We've highlighted 